the White Rook 85. First day of fall, and what I always think of when, when this time comes around, it's time for a little deer hunting. I did a video uh, last year on a buckshot test of the long range, and looks like a lot of you enjoyed that video and got something out of it. And so I decided to do something a little bit different. I'm going to do basically the uh, same idea, same concept. This time, I have four different guns over here. The last time I used my Mossberg 500. Uh, it had the Carlson Coyote choke on it, and that's it was supposed to give uh, good accuracy out to 70 yards, and I think we proved that that really wasn't true for that particular gun. Got a lot of comments on the video. Some people said the Coyote choke was choking the uh, shot down and it was deforming it, so it was spreading. Um, some people said Mossbergs are junky. That's okay. So I decided to I'm going to take, this is my, actually my turkey choke on here, I'm going to take the tur turkey choke off, I'm going to put the full choke in there, have my Stoger coach gun, uh, I'm going to take the choke out of there once I'm finished with the Mossberg and put the full choke in there, that's a 20 inch barrel, uh, the rest of these are 26 inch barrels. Uh, I borrowed a Remington 870. A lot of people said I was going to get better accuracy with the Remington 870. Now this one does have a mod modified choke in here, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and, and use the modified choke. I don't have a full, the full choke to put in there, so I've got to use what I have. And I have my old Savage double barrel from when I was 12 years old, and this has a modified and a full choke in it. So I think I'm going to use modified choke in this one also. So I'll be using the right barrel, the modified choke. Use the modified choke with the Remington 870. Full choke with a 20 inch barrel with a Stugger coach gun. And then the full choke in the Mossberg 500 and uh, 26 inch barrel on that. And we're going to shoot at uh, downrange. Got a target set up. Now I didn't use a deer this time. That was one also, I used a, a picture of a deer that was supposed to be life size. It was uh, big, but it but a lot of the guys said that it was smaller than what a regular deer would be. So I decided to go ahead and just use the shoot and see targets. So then you can form your own opinion as far as spread and and effectiveness uh, out to at a 55 yards. So at least maybe we'll get a little bit more of a an honest interpretation of where it's hitting, and then you can use that to, to formulate uh, what either 110 pound doe or 160 pound buck. Um, and again, just check your state game laws. Uh, we're shooting from the camp today and here in Pennsylvania, buckshot is not allowed. So I could not use, if I was hunting here, could not use buckshot. Delaware, down on the farm, uh, it is legal to use buckshot. So make sure you check your game laws. A lot of guys said, uh, why aren't you using slugs? I have a slug gun. I have two slug guns. I have the, uh, the Savage 220 20 gauge slug gun with the scope and have the Browning Gold auto loader 12 gauge uh, slug gun. And that's what we use down at the farm. This is more of a of just if I would want to use this, I want to know where, where it's hitting. And if you're out there and you say, hey, you know, I want to use buckshot, make sure you get it out there with your shotgun and do some range testing and so where you feel comfortable that you're going to make the killing shot, the humane shot where your animal is going to go down. Again, I never want to see a wounded deer. I'm not advocating that you take long range shots, that you, you know, have a wounded deer and you got to track it. That's not what we're, we're really looking for. But if you're in a thick spot, if you have a lot of running deer and, and you want to use buckshot, that's up to you. I'm not going to tell you not to use it. I'm just going to tell you, make sure that you, you know where the patterns are and where everything's hitting. So uh, we'll get started. I'll, uh, I'll get my Mossberg here. As you can see, is unloaded. Just leave it open. Let me unscrew this turkey choke. And this is a nice tool that I got. came with the Stoger coach gun for screwing in that choke. This time, I'm going to do something a little bit different also. I'm going to use double-lot buck and 
trip lock buck. That's why you see the two targets down there on the right hand side. I'll go ahead and take a shot with the triple lot buck. Left hand side, I'll go ahead and use the double lot buck. So we'll be shooting from the same distance, 55 yards, which I think we'll see if it's the maximum. I mean, if I was using one of these different firearms, my range might be 40 or 30 or not at all. That's what you want to find out. That's why you want to take your firearm out to the range, make sure you pattern it. Sorry for repeating myself, but make sure you do that so you, you get a nice humane shot if you happen to use the buckshot. These are our Winchester Super X, nine pellets uh, per shell. And we have the Federal, the triple lot buck. Uh, and these are also two and three quarters, so we're going to go ahead and use that. I'll, I'll go ahead and start off with the double lot buck. Again, we're going to use the shooting rest just to make sure that, uh, that we're as steady as I can be and make sure that uh, it's, not, it's not my aim. Let's send the first one down range there at the, the left hand target. Just leave him open. We're going to take a walk down. Now this bullseye to shoot and see, this is 17 and a half inches. So as far as your deer size goes, whether you're shooting at the neck, you're shooting at the shoulder, uh, the you know the heart lung area, uh, you know, this this way you'll be able to make your mind up on how this did. I was trying to go for right in this area right here, and again I'm only shooting the the fiber optic sights that are on there, so there's no sights, there's no scope or anything like that. But we have, uh, have a hit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one flyer way over here. This, not, uh, you know, not really, I don't think, a bad group. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, and I do have my ruler with me. Uh, all within about 10 inches or so. The max max spread was 10 inch right there. So with a little bit more practicing, uh, to, when you know where you hold, uh, that's not that's not a bad group. If you're going, that's that's even a neck right there. You know, the deer neck, probably uh, depending on the size of the deer. If it's small, it could be six inches. If it's a big buck in a rut, it could be a, it could be a foot wide. So that's uh, that's not a bad spot if you're going for the neck. If you're going for heart lung area, uh, shoulder behind the shoulder. That's a, that's a great pattern right there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and mark these up with the green and I'll maybe I'll put a little bit of a, uh, a key over here so we know what's what. But I'll go ahead and mark these up in green. So I know that was the double otter from Mossberg. And uh, Key over here, Mossberg 500 green dot. And we'll go ahead over at the left target now uh, with this triple lot buck. Whew. All right, he is empty, gonna leave the action open. And here we are with the uh, triple lot buck. Same gun, Mossberg 500. Uh, Pattern-wise, not as nice as the double lot buck. Uh, whether it's the shell, uh, I don't think it was me moving. One, I had the rest. Two, I have two over here, way off the target. I got two over there, way off the target. So if I was pulling and it was all the shot was going in that way, I could see. But really, we only have two good shots right here. Two out of the eight. Now there's eight pellets. With this, uh, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they're uh, they're a little bit on the wide side. So uh, triple odd buck through my Mossberg 500 with the full choke. Uh, not feeling it for it. Uh, it seems like it's a little bit on the uh, a little bit on the wide side. Uh, of course, uh, the diameter I do have a little. Triple odd buck over here, representation, the caliber or diameter of the bowl, 36. Over here with our double odd, 
as we can see, 30, 33. So we uh, we do have a little bit smaller of the uh, the shot, but that, this was a nice this was a nice placement right in here. This is good, I think, for 55 yards. If you've decided on a gun, you've decided on a load. Uh, make sure you go ahead and you know take take more than that one shot. I know sometimes shooting that uh, the buck shot it might not be the most pleasant thing in the world. Kind of kicks you like a government mule a little bit, but uh, at least you'll know. And that's that's the biggest thing about getting out there and uh, and knowing where you're gonna where your shot is gonna hit. Pretty big pattern here, not not, and it's something that I like. Now, if I was going to use the triple eye and I was going to use those federal shells, I would take a few more shots to see where we're pattering at. But uh, this I'm not too impressed with at the moment. We're clear here. I'm going to go ahead and take this full choke and take him out of here and put him into the Stoger. All right, we're ready for right barrel, 20 inch barrel and double barrel so I'm gonna have to kinda line my sight right down the barrel itself so it's of course with a double barrel I'm sure you've maybe have seen these or shot them before your sight is basically in the center of both barrels but I'm gonna try to just go ahead and take my aim right down that right barrel and do as good a job as I can getting on target there alright let's drop this double O buck in here of course you're automatically on safe anytime you crack over a double barrel and close the action Get myself set here. Shoot at the left target. Whew. Old smoky. All right, here we are. The uh, double odd buck Stoger coach gun, 20 inch barrel. Uh, not bad with the four that were uh, almost in the bullseye. No, not bad. The only problem is the other five really spread out. We have a couple up top, one over here, and one way over in our key. And uh, you can believe it, look at this over here. Three feet off of that. So we certainly had a flyer out of that. Is it the full choke? Could be. So we're going to go ahead and check with our modifieds next. So uh, let's cover these up. I'll use, go ahead and use the... Uh, the pinkies, we'll cover these up real quick and we'll get on to the uh, Stoker coach with the uh, triple odd buck over on this side. I do want to check. I don't think I missed anything. Nope. All right, we got our uh, triple odd. Drop them in our side that we put at the full choke on and we're on safe. He is empty, safety is on, and I'll meet you down at the board. Big spread on our triple lot buck. We've got some up here, here, one down here in the bowl, a couple more down here. So we're really talking a big spread. And I do have the tape measure in my pocket, uh, but I think that's a, probably about a 24 inch spread on this. These guys. Check it real quick. That's 28. That's 28. So uh, so far the triple lock buck, and again whether it's the uh, federal shell or not, uh, but as far as certainly a 55 yards, not impressing me uh, to use uh, for for a deer. We're coyote or we're hog. Uh, I can see uh, using it on it on any three of those species. So let's uh, let me make sure that's our nine. We got one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I think we're eight on this. Up oh, there it is, right here. Double odd buck. A little bit better pattern. We got four nice shots in here. Triple odd, as you can see, kind of all over the place. Same gun, same distance. The only difference is one is a Winchester double odd buck. The other is a Federal triple odd buck. So let's start working on those modified chokes next. The Remington 870 Express, and uh, we're going to go ahead with our double lock buck. 
with a modified choke and, and see what that does. Let's go ahead and get him done. empty. The, uh, the Remington 870 uh, with the modified choke. And again, uh, we got five here actually within the 17 and a half inches diameter. And about a 12 foot spread, or excuse me, 12 inch spread. Uh, right here, so we got one, two, three, four, five within, uh, within 12 inches here. Got a couple flyers out over here. Got another one off the board down here. That would have been a, probably about a 13 inch spread if you would have included him. And we got one over here. And here we are with the with the yellow. And again, modified Remington 870. I, I, I did wish I had the full choke for that, but uh, unfortunately barred it and uh, we don't have it. But uh, really testing out to see if there's a difference between the, the full and the modified. Again, a lot of guys said that these BBs were getting choked and disformed. And, and of course, thus causing them to uh, not be as accurate, and uh, that may be the case with uh, each of these ones that have, has a tendency of flying off a little bit. Not a bad shot through here, 55 yards, modified. I think I probably might save that for maybe 45 yards or so, but uh, uh, let's go back and uh, let's shoot the triple lock buck on the other side. That's going to be interesting to see since we're getting such a spread down there with that uh, triple lot buck. We got a triple lot. Let's go ahead and load up. Clear. And here we are with our triple lot uh, on the 17 inch diameter target. Really, we have one about six inches from the bull right here. A couple down here, a couple over here, one over there. Well, I missed one up here, so it looks like we had two in the black. But again, two is uh, it's still not good enough for me. I still want to want to get a good that I know that at least four or five uh, are hitting uh, within the kill zone. Yeah, so we just get a clean shot. I use three different firearms, uh, all from 55 yards, and besides the uh, the Mossberg 500 that it had a couple in here, but uh, we got one more firearm to try, both uh, double and triple. This is the uh, Stevens uh, Model 311A that uh, that I mentioned. Again, this was my first shotgun that I got, and uh, modified full, and we're going to go ahead with the modified. And we got our double lot, the third round. We are on safe. Whew. All right. Empty him out. Yeah, the bullseye. We got one here, a couple down here. That's about, uh, without getting the roller out, that's about 11, 12 inches right there. We got four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Again, all on the board, but uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit fly to me. I got a couple over here, got a couple over here. So we know we didn't. I didn't yank that shot. The modified looks to be a little bit too open for uh, for 55 yards. So I think even the the crushing of the shell and the deforming of the of the shell, or excuse me, of the uh, the pellet itself, really doesn't uh, at this point seem like you're getting any returns because it's uh, it's opening up way too wide. That's why I say get out to the range, see what your particular firearm can do, see what you're comfortable with, and then when you it's time for you to head out to the woods, you'll know exactly where that gun patterns. You'll have uh, a comfort level, and uh, isn't that a majority of knowing that you're going to hit the target when you're actually shooting at a deer? That's half the battle right there. Just knowing that you're going to hit it once you pull the trigger, because you have confidence uh, in where your bullet's going to fly. So uh, we're going to go ahead one more on this side with the triple lot. I'm expecting uh, it to be all over the place. To tell you the truth, since we were with a uh, with the double, as you can see with these oranges, not to didn't get a nice tight group like the green. 
We're nice type like we did with the uh, Stoger coach gun with the full choke. All right, our final shot of the day with our triple F buck modified. All right, our last one. Remember, eight pellets. We have uh, two in the target, two down here. That's four, five, six, seven. Am I missing my eighth one? You see one there, Syntex? No. I think he's off the board. He might have flown right off the board. Kind of down into here, into here. So nothing that nothing real great. So I would say uh, the modified choke and full choke at 55 yards with the four different firearms that I used. None of them really gave me a good feeling that I would want to shoot 55 yards uh, with uh, triple odd buckshot with those federal shells. Now maybe uh, there's another brand out there that may group better. And again, get out there and test uh, over here. 55 and again if I took a few more shots and was able to, to sight in to know where I had to hold there's a good pattern right here for 55 yards for double lot buck again one two three four five six and again what was that in eight inches when we looked in it so that's a good pattern right there uh, a few more even the uh, the Stoger coach you know we had four here uh, some of the rest kind of flew around a little bit but uh, not too bad and as we go into the modified as you can see, not the not the best. Now we did have the four down here, uh, which if they were in there would be great. I'd say stick to the full choke uh, when you're going that far. I mean, do you have to over choke? Do you go to say like one of those Carlson Coyote chokes or one of the different brands? Probably don't need to do that. I would stick with the full choke and get out there practice. Again, 55 yards. I would think we're talking maximum for the Mossberg and the Stoger. I would not want to go any farther than that, and I would certainly want to be closer than that. So this will be my max distance that I would ever want to think about it taking a shot at. But I'm really going to get myself set up that when I do have a shot, it's going to be 30 yards. We're in the 40s, uh, but that is about it. But get out there, practice, see what your firearm does. You know, I, I enjoy doing this, and I'm probably going to do another one on this next year. At, at a different distance with, uh, with something else. Maybe I'll find some different shells if they're, the ammunition ever becomes available again. Signing out from Camp Goat Time, deep in the woods, Pennsylvania. Time for a nice tea.